Thank you. Uh, if you can go back to the slide, that will be much appreciated. That is interesting, right? When a shepherd calls the sheep, the sheep know the voice. And that's the beauty of it. Throughout the Bible, we see that uh, God or Jesus Christ is considered as a shepherd. And when the shepherd calls the sheep, um, listen to his voice. Now, I'm going to read from scripture a passage which is from Matthew chapter 18, verse 10 to 14, and I will read that. Um, uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, I believe it's there. Okay, before we go into that, I'll just show you. What in the olden days, what used to happen is the sheep go for gazing. And to protect them from other wild animals, they would make a hedge like this with stones. And in the night, the shepherd would come and sleep near that gate so that if animals, wild animals try to come and attack, he has his staff, which is like a nice stick, or something in his hand to make sure these animals are driven away. And they don't come, but he protects the animals through the night. And that's a good shepherd. Now, if it's a, a shepherd who is, you know, on, you know, uh, on rent, you know, like uh, the main shepherd is on vacation, you know, heading to, we have now a lot of people traveling to Montreal, uh, to different places, uh, Florida, Philadelphia, and so forth. And you say, hey, somebody else, can you just fill up for me? So the shepherd will say, okay, uh, you're paying me 10 bucks. Um, yeah, just a little below the normal, uh, you know, pay, but it's okay for a couple of nights. He'll come and sleep there. But the moment a bear or a lion comes, what will happen? He'll run for his life. He's not going to protect the sheep because he's a paid one. But if it's the shepherd who really, the real shepherd, he'll stay there and fight it. And that's the difference. Okay, let's move to the next slide. And we're going to read the scripture um, of the lost sheep. See that you didn't, do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Now here is what Jesus is going to say. What do you think? If a man had hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, Truly, I say to you, he rejoiced over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. So it is not my will, so it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. May the Lord uh, bless this reading for us. So what's happened here is, what Jesus is trying to talk about a story is, one of the little fellows, uh, if you go to the previous slide, you will see uh, one of the little fellows, he just sneaked out of the gang. You know, he just said, hey, let me go explore. Let me go see what the world is like. Oh, we have lots of fun out here. Oh, we can go on trips. Oh, I can just uh, figure out what I want to do with my life. It's my life. I am responsible for my life. And I don't care anybody else who says about it. And people just go their way. And far away, far away, till they're finally lost and nobody knows where they are. You know, if I look back into my life, there has been a time when I just walked away from God. And, you know, um, just sometimes I say, God, you can stay in your corner. It's my life. I'll do whatever mess I want with mine. And I went. But this good shepherd, he came and found me right where I am. And what's really, really touched my heart is, all of you guys sitting here are perfect. And I'm the only imperfect person. God says, that's what the scripture says, Jesus Christ would still come and die on the cross just for me. And that is the uniqueness of his love. 
you know god decided to come into this world and to die on the cross for each one of us why does he have to die he's god all he has to say is i love you here is a, pro- a process of salvation and that's it but that was not it the seriousness of it is when we walk away from god it's called sin and when we lose that connection with god just like this lost sheep we can never step into heaven because god is a perfect god and for us to go to heaven we need to be perfect and there was no way now any other solution would have not really paid the price because the seriousness of sin is death god says the penalty of sin is death there is no other option now god did something unique the creator himself came into this world in the form of a babe we saw that here and he was born in this world as a little baby grew up and then he when he preached around sharing the love of his love why he came for to find the lost sheep and finally he stretched out his hands and his feet on the cross let me tell you something those nails did not hold him on that cross he's god he can just step down and walk away you know i'll tell you something interesting when uh, he was on the mount of olives uh, praying just before he was going to be crucified and th- almost more than a thousand soldiers roman soldiers came to arrest him jesus thousand soldiers one person they came and they said where is jesus and jesus said here i am the moment he said that the scripture says all the thousand soldiers just fell to the floor he was he's powerful he's god the creator of this entire universe and each one of us and yet he said here i am i'm willing to die for each one and it was not the nails that held him there it was his love for each one of us he took our place the punishment for sin is death he took that place and he said i will die in your place god doing that for us for a person like me a useless person a worthless person i cannot even comprehend i can't even imagine his love for us and that is what he did and why did the creator have to die when creator dies for creation he dies for everyone you see if i were to die for a friend of mine um you know or somebody else were to die for me you know i'm done something wrong i'm before the court of justice and i have to face the punishment of death somebody else can die for me but not for the whole world god loved each one of us and creator himself came <laughs> and found that lost sheep and i am one of them my eyes open to see the love of god and he doesn't say anything you know uh, the beauty of what really attracted me to jesus was um, i don't know some of you might know about it you know uh, i have secretly without my parents even knowing i have tried everything in religion wise understanding and God came and showed me what it is. He said, "I will die. I have died for you and for your sins. Paid it completely, fully, and never to remember again." And that is the love of God. And this love doesn't just finish with that. He says, "I will see you through in your life till you reach with me." till you reach my place heaven to be with me in eternity what a joy is that uh, if you go to the next slide uh, and the slide after please uh, you know when uh, this lost sheep was found he was put on the shoulder and was brought home to that sheep pen it's called the sheep pen you know uh, let's take a step back how many times in our lives how many times we've gone through rough situations 
we don't even know what's going on we can't even stand we can't even sit because it's totally out of our control and when we look hindsight we take a step back and look at it we see what just happened god put us on his shoulder and he walked with us he walked that path to lead us to the next step you see how beautiful it is we'll go to the next slide please we saw this picture while the christmas program was going on uh, when you know the youth sang so many kings have come and passed away so many rulers have come and passed away it's all forgotten but god is different now what's unique about god um he came he died on the cross he he wasn't held to those nails it was his love for each one of us he was he died buried on the third day he rose to show the world that he was not an ordinary man but god and that tomb is still there it's empty you know so many people have tried to look for it but it's not there because god has in heaven it's a risen god we celebrate this time the birth of jesus christ is because why is this big celebration because he came into this world god who's up in heaven stepping down to the lowest estate and he was born in a manger in a cow shed can you even imagine any of our babies being born in a cow shed such an unhygienic place but he went to the lowest of the lowest just to redeem us by his precious blood and the penalty was paid when that sin the, his blood was shed and it washed away our sins would you believe and he's only asking he's not asking us to do anything more he doesn't want anything else he says i have done it all for you if only you will invite me into your heart as lord and savior because he's risen and he's coming back the scripture says now how do we know he's coming back i mean people say he's there coming back i'll be back and so far if you see throughout the scriptures about 365 promises so written in the scripture word by word have been fulfilled in this world everything ditto if those have been promised his coming which he said will surely happen and that is a joy this lost sheep that we were talking about was found and the shepherd found put him on his shoulder and took him back now when the sh- shepherd was looking around for the sheep uh he you know like the shepherd was calling out he would have called out the same name and the sheep would have bleated ba ba and then he opened up he opened up to the shepherd and the shepherd took him on his shoulder and brought him back you know may the lord enable us to understand that if we give our life to him if we trust in him and if we say yes you came into this world just to love us to die for us so that we can have eternal life life beyond you know uh, we have some uh, experts you know like uh, venkat who's an rbc guy you tell him he will tell you every detail about investments you're not going to go wrong with that he's an expert on it because he can help you invest into the future but it's only for this life have you thought about investing for eternity eternal life forever think about it and may the lord bless us and that decision may be uh, with the lord and god is here in our presence he listens to our heart and if we will invite him as lord and savior he's willing to come into our hearts and be with us and he's coming back and when he comes back he's going to call out for his children and when he calls out for his children they'll be taken up to be with him for eternity what a joy it will be what a blessing and may the lord bless us this with this word and bless each one's heart and this uh, let's look up to the lord in prayer for blessings uh, for this week and as we are entering into christmas week 
as we celebrate all the lights, the fun, the food, friends, all that. Let us not remember, let us not forget to remember our Savior who died on the cross for each one of us. And that's why he was born, uh, to show us how much he loved us. And he paid that price in full, uh, once and for all, to give us eternal life. May the Lord bless us with this word. Let's look up to the Lord in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for finding each one of us as lost sheep. We had gone away in our sins. And Lord, when we look around, Lord, we see many people who have still lost, not having any hope in life. But we thank you, Lord, for showing us that way. Thank you for coming into this world and dying on that cross for each one of us. Lord, you, you died, you suffered, that we paid the price for our sin completely at that cross so that we can have eternal life. Lord, we believe that you are our Lord and our Savior. And we believe in our heart. And we know for sure that peace that rests in us, we know for sure that you're coming soon and we shall be with you in eternity. Thank you, Lord, for that amazing salvation. Lord, we did not come and look out for you and try to find you and please you, but you came and fetched us wherever we were, whatever situation we were. You fetched us and found us, and you know us by name, and you called us. Thank you, Lord, for that. And we pray that you will bless uh, our, this Christmas time, and we will enjoy good time and fellowship with one another. We thank you for the families that have come here. Lord, uh, thank you for the heart that you've given them to join us. To uh, And Lord, in the days ahead, we will all get to know each other even more and be a stronger family for God. We pray for the food that's prepared. Lord, as we enjoy the fellowship downstairs, uh, help us to eat and to be for your glory. Bless this week ahead of and many are traveling for, to meet with other families during Christmas and to have some uh, family break and fun that you'll protect each one and guide them through. We especially pray for uh, Sister Lovely's dad who had a heart attack and uh, Joe's uncle and Lovely are there. Sister Lovely are there. We pray that the time they're there would be a time of strengthening and peace and blessing. Lord, we also remember the little children who did the skit, the Christmas program. Uh, and Lord, as they shared uh, that amazing love of yours on the cross, we pray that you will continue to bless these little children, that they will be for your glory. And also the youth who sang those beautiful songs. And each one's life would be for your glory. Please, Lord, we, Lord, we do not deserve uh, for you to listen to our prayer. Yet, Lord, we thank you for listening to our prayer so carefully, so graciously. Uh, bless this prayer and bless each one of us. We ask this prayer in all humility and then through the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And at this time, um, some of the families will guide you downstairs. And let's have some wonderful time of lunch, right? It's 12 o'clock. I'm hungry. My stomach is already uh, growling. So let's enjoy the fellowship. And thank you to each one of you. You all have taken real good time to come here. We really, really appreciate it. And the days ahead, uh, looking forward to see you all. God bless.